Chapter 6 is about integer linear programming problems. So how do we define them? Integer linear programming model is a linear programming model, so we still have linear objective linear constraints, but we have some additional constraints which are actually not linear, and these constraints require some or all variables to have integer values. We write them in the following way. We say xi uh, integer, or some other variable, integer, which means xi has to take uh, values that are whole numbers or integer numbers, right? And this can be 0, 1, 2, 3, but also minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. These are also integer or whole numbers. A uh, special case will be xi binary. xi binary limits the integer numbers to just 0 and 1, right? This is quite often a very useful decision variable, like an indicator variable. And if you see, if you think about this, this means the, that xi is integer, but it is also limited by lower and upper limits between 0 and 1, right? If you consider this, this is exactly equivalent to saying it's 0 or 1, because between 0 and 1, there are only two integer numbers, which are actually the 0 and the 1, and th the other values are fractional, so the requirement that it is integer r does not allow those uh, fractional values to, to be assumed by x1. Now, uh, often we will want the non-negative integer values, so often we will write xi, or another variable, greater than or equal to 0 and integer, and we will basically mean xi can be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now examples that we examples of integer variables uh, are as follows whenever we have a number that needs to be a whole number like like a number of workers number of products number of machines or something else we will use integer variables uh, whenever we have decisions that are of type yes or no right do something or don't do something uh, like hire a worker or not finance a project or not, right? If you, you might have multiple workers for which you decide, each of them you decide yes or no, finance project, multiple projects, yes or no. Then you will use binary variables, one for each worker or one for each project, right? And these binary variables will be one if we select, if we hire or we finance, and zero if we do not hire, do not finance. Now, it's important to remember one thing, is when you have a, a problem, that uh, has many continuous variables, but there is there are some integer variables. The problem is alre already considered to be integer linear programming uh, problem. Uh, why is it? Because you see, even if you have at least one integer variable, uh, the the solver that you use has to be aware of has to be able to sorry um, deal with integer constraints, right? So even if I have 10 variables, 9 of them are just non-negative continuous, but 1 is integer or binary, the, then I will still call this integer linear programming model, right? Uh, sometimes we call such models mixed integer linear programming models, right? We, to indicate that the variables are not all integer, they are mixed. Some are continuous and some are integer, right? Okay, so if we want to solve uh, integer linear programming problems, again, let's consider first the graphical method. How would the graphical method work? So I'm not going to show you all the stages, but I'm going to show you um, a sketch of how you solve the, these models. And you have an example model here, right? We maximize a profit. We have two resource constraints. I indicated them as C1, C2 from constraint 1, constraint 2. And we have some um, non-negativity constraints, two non-negativity and integrality constraints or integer constraints. How do we solve such a problem? Well, first of all, we have to plot the feasible region of the LP relaxation. I, I haven't defined it yet, but I'll define LP relaxation later on. For now, uh, let's just assume all you need to do is ignore the integer constraint and plot the feasible region, right? So we have four constraints here, C1, C2, and the two non-negativities. Here is how it will look. Right, this is actually I did this prepare I prepared this before. So you see the feasible region, ignoring the integer constraint, is the blue region here. Right. Now the second step is well now now we want to add the integer constraint and see how it changes the feasible region. Now if you want all uh, po solutions feasible solutions to have integer or whole number values, then that means you can't have for example x1 equals one and a half here. Right. For example, one and a half zero, one and a half zero. This point is 
feasible for the continuous problem, but when we add integer restriction, this is not feasible. But for example, 1, 0 is feasible for integer problem because uh, 1 is, for x1, 1 is integer and 0 value is integer, right? Or 1, 1 or 2, 1 here, right? So I can mark all those points and it will look like this, right? We indicate integer feasible solutions. So only the points uh, that have integer values, for example, this point, the value for x1 is 2, the value for x2 is 1, right? So it is integer and it is also feasible for the other constraints because it is inside this region, right? For example, if I take a point that is 3, 2, x1, 3, x2, 2, uh, this would be integer point, but it is not feasible for the other constraints because it is outside of the constraint lines, right? Of the feasible, of the continuous feasible region. Now it is important that you realize that feasible region is really this, right? Feasible region are just the dots that are at points where we have whole number value of x1 and whole number value of x2, right? So we really have feasible region here that consists of 11 points, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There is only integer feasible points. So the situation changes dramatically because before we had like a, a continuous region, right? This was the region before in the continuous case. But when you add integer constraint, this gets restricted to, to just a, a number of discrete points, right? The th third step is really no different from um, from what we did before in the continuous case. We just have to, now that we have the feasible region, right, we've considered all the constraints, we still have to consider the objective, and the objective will tell us which of those feasible points is the best, right? So we can, for example, use the level curve again, and we can draw, um, we can plot, for example, when is the objective function equal to some constant values. I chose 3 and 6 in my case, so I chose objective equals 3 and it gave me this line and objective equals 6 gave me this line, right? You could choose any numbers if you remember, just as long as you can see the lines on the, on the, on the graph. And so from this I see that, um, right, the objective is increasing in this direction from 3 up to 6 here and because we have maximization I want the increase, so I want to take this line even further and if you continue moving, shifting this line up and to the right, you'll see that we'll get to this line, with this line uh, which will still cross one feasible region, uh, one feasible point, sorry, but if you look above there is no more feasible points above it, so that means this must be the optimal solution, right? All, all this line says, uh, this line shows that um, above it there are no feasible points, below it there are points that are feasible but they are worse because they are on a lower profit. Uh, right lines so that means this must be the optimal solution and now actually computation is much easier because we know this is an integer point we already know the coordinates of this are 2 2 so we don't need to calculate intersection of things and so on right so now we know the optimal solution of this problem is 2 2 x1 2 x2 2 and we know if we plug in into the objective these, these values 2, 2, then you'll get the optimal objective function value to total profit equal to 10. Now notice that 2, 2 was not an optimal solution for this, for this uh, problem, right? For the fractional, for the continuous case, if you con sorry, consider continuous case, you see probably this would be the optimal solution just because the level curves were something like this, right? And this wouldn't be integer, it would be 2 point something, 1 point something, right? Would be fractional, but with integer constraint, we have we have this uh, uh, this optimal solution. Okay, uh, how do we solve uh, such problems in uh, Excel? So uh, first of all, you implement everything uh, uh, as before, like variables. You have to reserve cells for variables. You have to have an objective function calculation, linear constraints calculation of left-hand side, right-hand side values, everything as before. Then, then one new thing is that you have to add integer constraints on variables. So you basically select some variables that you want to have to be integer and in this drop-down box you select int or if you want them binary you select bin that is also bin here. Right? One more important thing is that you have to uh, set a parameter in solver options called integer optimality. Integer optimality here 
normally has there is a value one or five or some other right positive number. This value is also called tolerance in older versions of Excel. It was called tolerance, and basically it means that if it is not zero, that it means that the solver can stop and return a solution that is worse worse than optimal by tolerance value. So basically if this says let's say 5% and you click solve in the solver, the solver can stop when it finds a solution that it knows is not worse than optimal sorry is worse than optimal by at most 5%, right? So what that means is it really can give you suboptimal solution. This is because uh, this is done because these problems are much harder to solve, integer problems are much harder to solve and because of this sometimes it is a good idea to stop early the solution process. Um, uh, one more comment is that uh, uh, sometimes you put integer binary constraints and then click solve and you get an optimal solution but it's fractional, right? Uh, sometimes it can be the rounding, right? If you get 0 0.9999999, right? Then that means, okay, it's really 1 and the solver just did not get it exactly accurately 1. But sometimes you really get fractions and that may be because there is here an option which is called ignore integer constraints right and so basically if you get a fractional solution make sure this option is not checked uh, uncheck this option and solve again right and uh, also we s when we select a solving method we still select simplex lp but there will be a method called branch and bound uh, that will be really used with just simplex method used as a, a as a sub procedure of this branch and bound method so let's look at excel how does it look in excel so i've implemented I have this model, right, that we would just consider for the graphical solution, and I've implemented my x1, x2 here, my profit function as some product, left-hand side of the constraints, and then right-hand side, I've indicated also less than or equal, just to remember uh, those uh, signs of the constraints. So now what happens when I go to the solver? So when we go to the solver, again, I have to say, right, take this objective, maximize it by changing these variables, subject to constraints as before, right? So I want to say these two constraints, these two values, less than or equal those two right-hand sides. Uh, I want the non-negativity, so I select variables greater than or equal zero, right? But there's one more thing, and that's the new thing. I select variables integer, right? If I don't select this, I would have continuous fractional solution of this problem. But if I select this to be integer and click OK, right? This is how it shows. Now again, I have to select simplex LP as the method. And if you remember, I have to go to options. And in the options, I have to make sure that the integer optimality is set to zero. If you forget about this, you might get worse than optimal solution. Set this to zero to make sure that the solver only stops when it knows it has the optimal solution. And uh, make sure this is unchecked, right? So I click OK. And then I click solve, and solver found, read the message, right? Solver found an optimal solution, or solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. Uh, and you can see our solution here is 2, 2, as, as we determined graphically. So both methods found the same optimal solution, which is what we expected. One more thing is we don't have sensitivity analysis here, if you notice. We only have the answer report, but answer report does not have shadow prices, does not have allowable increase and decrease. And the reason for this is that this shadow price basically cannot be determined for for integer problems. That's why we don't have those, right? So we've, I've showed you how to solve uh, the same problem using graphical method and using uh, the uh, Excel solver with additional integer constraints.